After a very long wait, Realme has finally rolled out its new software update, which is called Color OS 7. Oh, sorry, I did not get that right. I meant Realme UI. Now, unlike the name, they did put a lot of efforts into making the whole experience seamless for users and make it all smooth. It comes with a lot of new features and, well, there is a long list of features, but you guys should definitely be interested in what these features are. Well, that's what we're here for today. This is Varun from Guiding Tech and today I'll be talking about 11 new features rolled out with Realme UI. Well, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing to see here is the new notification tray and the quick settings. Now, similar to Samsung's One UI, the clock occupies the major top portion of the quick settings display while all the icons are shifted below. This makes it easier to access with one hand. I mean, I do have big hands, but this is definitely a welcome change. The notification tray itself is also more streamlined and I personally love the neat and clean look here. Now, speaking of looks, you can also tweak the way your icons look in Realme UI. You can choose from a material design, a pebble look, or if you want, customize each and every aspect of the icons as per your liking. Now it goes on to add to the customizability factor a lot, which is something I really like. Is it functional? Not really. But does it look good? Absolutely. Now, if you've been following us on Instagram, you would know that we are great fans of different kind of wallpapers. By the way, you should definitely check out our Instagram handle from the link in the description box below. Yeah, so coming back to the whole wallpaper thingy, Realme UI comes with a handful of new wallpapers that actually change with the passage of time and it genuinely looks super cool. I'll admit that they are the same as on ColorOS 7, something we've already done a video on, but I mean, I still like them. Especially this one, where it shows the hava melt change with the passage of time. I'm sure a lot of you guys will love this. Next up is what is indefinitely my favorite change here and is sure to be your favorite change too. So Realme has been giving Xiaomi a run for its money for a very long time, especially in terms of camera, but the whole camera UI on Realme's devices, well, it has been a bit of a letdown. That changes with Realme UI because the camera gets a complete overall of its UI. It's quite reminiscent of the iPhone cameras and personally, I like the change. The menus are easy to access. There's a dedicated 64 megapixel mode in the main tray by default and switching between lenses is much more convenient. Just move the slider to the left to enable the ultra wide mode or to the right to switch to the telephoto lens. As for the macro, the device will automatically switch to it if you're on the ultra wide sensor. So that's quite convenient. Now, another thing new that Realme UI brings along are stock Android 10 navigation gestures. Yes, gestures were present on previous iterations as well, but now you get the same experience as with stock Android. That said, Realme has struck a bit of a balance though, since they also give you the option to swipe and hold from either sides to easily switch to the last app. Alternatively, you can just swipe left and right from the bottom bar to the last app, just like you would on stock Android. Now, I don't wholeheartedly like this, but it is what it is. But then again, speaking of gestures, there are new three button screenshot gestures as well. So while the standard three finger swipe screenshot is still here, you can touch and hold with three fingers to take a partial screenshot as shown. Or better yet, swipe all the way downward to take a long shot as well. Now this works super conveniently and the only thing that I wish here was that there was a separate gesture for screen recording as well. I mean, that would have been really the icing on the cake. But then again, you can easily enable it from the sidebar, which also brings us to talking about the new sidebar. Now, this isn't a welcome change, but then again, it's new, it's here and you have to accept it. So unlike previous iterations, this time around, you just get a single column. However, it does come with a couple of new tricks up its sleeve. For starters, you can just drag an app out of the sidebar to open it in split screen mode. Another thing that you can easily do is to trigger screen recording from here, which is super convenient. So while we're on the topic of screen recording, the new software update also brings forth another new feature that should appeal to a lot of users, but especially streamers. So you can tap and hold on the screen recording quick toggle to enter the settings and once there, tweak around with the resolution. However, you can also allow it to record the system sound and or even the audio from the microphone. And hey, that's not all. You can even enable the front camera to record video at the same time, which means you can upload your PUBG gameplays later while offering a better experience to your viewers. 
Now I'll admit that it does take a toll on your system resources and while I do have it on my X2 Pro, I'm not sure which all devices from Realme will support this feature in the upcoming updates. Okay, so that's for making things look good for your viewers, but what about you? Like, how do you like to use your phone? Well, for me, it's with everything on dark mode. And thankfully, that feature is also present here. Yes, it was present earlier too, but now it's out of the Realme lab section and inside the display settings. There's also a cool toggle that comes with a nice animation like this, which looks damn good. Now, another thing that I would like to highlight here is that while the option to apply dark mode on other apps was there previously too, if you turned it on, it would by default turn all apps dark and you would have to turn them off. Here, it's the reverse. Just select the apps you want to turn dark and it works fine. I know it's a very little thing, but it genuinely makes everything super simple. Now, another thing that I really like here is the screen light effect. See, there's no notification LED here, but this feature almost makes up for it. The screen lights up in various colors alongside the edge, depending upon the notification you get. You can customize it as per your own liking and choose from orange, blue or purple. Now it's a really nice thing to have and the only thing that I can wish for is to have more color options. Maybe in the upcoming builds. Okay, so the last thing here is the focus mode, which is quite similar to OnePlus's Zen mode. You can turn it on from the quick settings and it disables all notifications and plays some calm music in the background to help you relax or just focus on your work. Okay, now there's one more feature that I haven't spoken of, which is dual mode music share. See, the thing is that the X2 Pro that I have is running a beta version of Realme UI, which does not have this feature yet. But for users who have the Realme XT or the Realme 3 Pro and have already received the Realme UI update, they can find this feature inside the Realme lab section. So what it does is that it basically allows you to play music on both a wired and a wireless headphone at the same time. Now I haven't tested it yet, but it shows sounds useful, especially when you're traveling with a friend and want to share your music with them. Now, before we wrap things up, there's one more thing that I want to talk about, which is ads. I know a lot of you guys are concerned about it. And so far in Realme UI, we do not have any sort of ads, but that is not to say that you won't get ads at all. I mean, the company has confirmed it, but then again, it's quite easy and it's just a simple one toggle to turn them off. So yeah, there's that. And with that, we come to an end of this video. If you liked our video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon right next to it. Also, I was thinking of doing a Realme UI comparison with other custom Android skins out there and which skins those will be is something you get to decide. So make sure to sound off in the comments below as well. This is Varun from Guiding Tech and I'll see you in the next one.